Hi, my name is Ginny Bootman. I am a primary school teacher. I am a senior leader and I'm a special needs coordinator. And I'm going to talk about homeschooling in our current climate, in our current situation. We've had two weeks where the children have been at home and been educated at home. We've then had two weeks of Easter holiday. So I think it's a good time for us to reflect, think about what is going well, what we've learnt and how we can improve, how we can do things differently. So when schools closed, I do feel that there was quite a feeling that potentially one size could fit all from the point of view of children being educated and um, schools chose to do this in different ways. And we now see that there is a continuum that it, there is a wide range of needs within that continuum. And this, um, from my perspective, has really come to the forefront when I see that the um, situation of parents at home is really, really, really wide. So I have heard of parents who are expected to still work the hours that they were working at home whilst looking after the children in the house as well. So we have that at one end, and then we have other parents who, for whatever reason, aren't working, they may have been furloughed, for whatever reason. So already, we have got a really, really wide range of, of needs from the parents' point of view that makes us think, actually, we need to think this through a little bit more because the needs are so different. So parents who are working um, full time, when I've spoken to them, they, they actually need a means to keep their children entertained, whether it be through schoolwork or by, by another means. These parents have got to work. They, they have got to work um, sometimes from eight till six alongside looking after their children. So that brings up a whole host of difficulties that, that, need to be, that need to be addressed. And as teachers, we have got limits as to what we can provide. In the school environment, there is a teacher and the teacher is teaching the children and giving feedback and providing that structure for the children in such a different way that can't be replicated at home. So I have really seen another side to having children at home during this time, that parents can't be there all the time to be with their children, educate their children, play with their children, look after their children. And I actually am finding it quite difficult to find a solution for that because I don't know what the solution is. Uh, I'm also hearing of uh, parents who their jobs have changed because of the current situation. Their roles have actually become more challenging because some of their colleagues have been furloughed. So their job has actually become more stressful and this is what concerns me, the fact that parents are having to work long hours with more stress and they are having to look after their children alongside that. I absolutely take my hat off to them because I, I do not know how people are managing this because there are so many balls that need to be juggled dur during the day and I actually don't know what the answer is. I don't know what the answer is. When we are interacting with parents, I think this is another um, time when we have to be very mindful of individuals. There are lots of ways that we can interact with uh, parents. Um, we can do um, Facebook, um, closed Facebook groups. We can do emails. We can have face-to-face face -to -face uh, class get-togethers, we can do recorded videos. 
we have to always consider the child. What is best for the child? And I've had so many conversations with parents, so many positive conversations with parents telling me, actually, can we do it this way? Because um, uh, a face-to-face -face class get-together doesn't suit my child's needs. Can we uh, converse with you via email? Yes, yes, of course. Once again, we're getting back to what I said at the beginning, one size doesn't fit all. And I really, really do feel this is pivotal that we can offer different ways for uh, parents to be able to communicate with us because they need to feel comfortable with the way that, that the communication is happening. Moving on to parents' expectations of themselves. Understandably, parents do not want their children to fall behind. So, if we throw that into the pot with the working parents, that's another ball to juggle. I don't want my child to get behind. And I, I can understand how minds are working, that some people will think if a parent isn't working, they will be doing schoolwork with their child. So the other child will be getting ahead and my child will be getting behind. I saw a wonderful, wonderful letter on, um, on the internet today and it said, um, don't worry about your child's academic progress. We will sort that and look after your child when they come back to school. It actually said, we are superheroes, which I did like. And it then said, your job is to keep your child feeling safe and to enjoy the time that you have together. We won't ever get this time back. This time is precious. And I think the word time is really important. We will not get this time back. So my message is everyone is doing a brilliant job. Don't compare yourself to anybody else because everybody is in their own unique situation with their family, their job. Everybody's situation is different and we all need to work together to help everybody, to help the parents, to help the children, to help the teachers. We're all in this together. Hashtag follow the empathy road. Thank you.